Hey guys, so today we find ourselves in a very special place. This is Portola Valley and uh, specifically the Redwood Forest. Now, we're here to do some camping and uh, admittedly, I'm, um, I am decided, you know, I'm gonna take this opportunity to do something I should have done a little while ago, which is update you guys on the progress on my TRD Pro. Now, if you guys remember before, I did this video and I'll put the link down below where I kind of did a walkthrough around the truck. And since that video, it's been about a year, the truck has come a long way, let me just tell you. So I'm really excited to walk you guys through what's different about the truck now, and also share some lessons learned so that you guys aren't gonna do the same mistakes I did, or and uh, maybe create a little bit of a better um, outcome for you and save some dough along the way. I think that's a good, a good thing to do. Anyway, with all that being said, let's jump right in. All right, guys, so the first thing you're probably going to notice is that. That is the Auto Home Mangiolina Airlander Plus. And actually, uh, this particular one is the, uh, me they call it the medium, um, medium large, which the dimensions of it are crazy. It's about seven feet long. So I'm 6'1", 6'2", and I can sprawl out in this thing and uh, be totally comfortable in it. And I think what's beautiful about it is that it sits really, really flush on top of the truck. It just gives it a little bit of an overland look, which is cool. And it's not that heavy. These things weigh about 145 pounds at this size. And, you know, it's made by an Italian designer. And so, by the way, this company has been around for, I think it's 50 to 60 years. So the, they know what they're doing when it comes to tents. Um, now this particular tent is a hard, a hard shell tent, as you can tell. And on the inside, it comes with a mattress that's super plush, super comfortable, um, and this one is crank up, crank down. So you don't have to worry about shocks going bad on it or anything like that. You just, you just twist and it goes up. Let's take you up the ladder and peek on in. So as you can see, and it's a little dark in here, guys. I'm sorry about that, but we are under the uh, cover of the forest. Um, as you can see, I've got my, um, well, this is actually a uh, pretty warm sleeping bag. It's a winter sleeping bag. I think it's rated to like, I don't know, like negative 20 degrees or something. Um, but uh, underneath here, you can see I've got a foam, pretty foam soft mattress here thing going. Um, I mean, it does the job, it's cozy. And the best part is, is that when you look in here, yeah, you get this net up top, which is great to store like your shoes or anything else. And on the sides, like right there on both sides of the tent, right there too. You can actually store like your cell phone or anything else that you got hanging out. I put my car keys there at night too. Um, and right there, we have an LED light, which is great. So it's super bright and yet, um, I mean, not crazy bright, but like bright enough that like it does the job like in the middle of the night when you wanna get up and go to the restroom or whatever. Um, now the best part about this is, you know, even me being a pretty tall guy, I can sit here and like my head does not hit the top. That's great. And this is pretty cozy. You can sprawl out. Um, obviously the vents and everything are netted. Um, you can close them and it gets dark in here and just enjoy a night's rest. I mean here, right in the forest. 
How cool is that? All right, so I did say I was gonna give you guys some tips. One tip, and this is just something that I, I don't know why I didn't think about it, but I just did it, is when you buy a rooftop tent for your truck, it is great and it beats sleeping on the ground any day of the week. I mean, not only does it look cool, right, as you can see up there, and not only does it keep you off the ground and keep you safe from any animals, any critters that you might be, uh, you know, in the way of, but, um, you know, it's got some negatives. And the biggest negative that I never thought about before is take a look at the truck itself. Now, the parking spot here starts there and goes to the back. But what I had to do was roll the truck back even farther. If you look here, you can see that right there is actually the parking stub. And the reason I had to do that was because the truck was not level if I parked it further down. And if it's not level, guess what? When you go to sleep at night, <laughs> your legs are going to be lower than your head and it's going to be really weird. Um, so, you know, if you're going to be looking at a rooftop tent, just kind of think about that because you might want to consider buying and there's there's blocks and chucks that people put underneath their tires to help level the vehicle out and everything. And that's great. Um, but that also means you probably need like a, like some sort of jack, like a high lift jack or something else just to get the tire up, or you could just drive onto it and hope it works out. Um, but you know, something to consider. One of the obvious changes to the truck since the last time I did an update is this guy right here. Um, I went with the ARB, uh, Safari snorkel. Well, they call it a snorkel, but really it's just a... A higher rise intake and I actually think this one um, probably does a better job than the TRD Pro um, stock one that comes on the 2019s uh, just to keep water out but the whole point of this is essentially to make it so that if you have to if you ever have to cross through any like rivers or creeks or anything like that instead of sucking up air from really right up in here um, where if the water level got dangerously close in there, you might suck up water and uh, go right into your uh, engine, which would be a big problem. Um, instead, it takes that and moves it all the way up here. So this inlet ensures that, you know, your motor doesn't suck in any uh, unwanted water, keeps you safer. It's just a little insurance policy. Plus, I actually think it looks kind of cool. Um, but there is a couple little things. I installed this thing myself, and let me tell you, you got to make a pretty large hole right here into your fender and then drill a bunch of holes and uh even into your um a pillar right there which is uh i mean it's a little bit um sketchy i mean it's like one of those things where you measure three times and you cut once right so just keep that in mind um also you know to do this installation i mean you really are taking out the fender liner the wheel and uh, you really got to get up in there um it's a it's a pretty long process i though i did it i would actually recommend that you just have somebody else do it because you don't want to mess this up but um thankfully i think i did a pretty good job it fits perfect um, and it does the job well and i think it suits the attitude of the truck what do you guys think Beautiful. The other thing I wanted to also talk about is um, it's usually something that most off-roaders do first, or it's one of the first mods they do, is getting skid plates for the vehicle and getting like the appropriate ones because, you know, quite honestly, there's a lot of companies that make a lot of different skids and not all of them are built the same, uh, but I'll walk you through what I ended up doing and why I did it. So let's get to it. All right, so what we got here I actually used to have the TRD Pro front skid plate and I replaced it with this CBI overlanding skid plate, which um, I think is a little bit more sleek. Um, it's the same quarter inch aluminum uh, all the way back and uh, it protects just as well. Um, the other thing is I also added these, which because they're black, they're a little bit undercover, but these are uh, A-arm skid plates, and these, these things are great because 
you know, if you're if you're about to go over some rocks or something, the last thing you want to do is damage something here that keeps you stranded. So I just figured it's cheap and uh, worthwhile insurance. Now here's the here's the one thing. I didn't do a very good job of picking my metals. This I went with aluminum because I wanted to save on weight because this vehicle is getting heavy quick. Here, for some unknown reason, I just decided to go with steel. And what happened was after about a week, these things started to look rusty. So I had to kind of sand them down a little bit and spray them. And uh, now they're black, so you can't even really tell they're there. But, um, but those do the job. I mean, really, who cares? No one's gonna look at this, but it's good just to know that it's there and it's protected. And these and this work together. And part of the reason why I decided to go with the CBI uh, front is also because of the transfer case skid, which I'll give you a better um, view of here in a second. So here's the transfer case skid, and as you can see, it's pretty slick. I mean, even the way it's as far sucked up to the truck as possible, and it interlocks with that front skid plate, which is why I decided to do that, because otherwise, otherwise, the uh, TRD Pro skid plate doesn't quite work right. Um, I would have to do maybe just a little bit of modification, a little bit of cutting and adjusting to make it work. I didn't really feel like doing that. The other thing I did is, now all of our gas tanks do have a cover on them, but it's just this really thin plastic. Um, I decided to get just this uh, much nicer looking and thicker looking um, aluminum piece here, and that's gonna protect the gas plate pretty well. Um, and then last but not least, the rear differential cover, that's from RCI. Um, and actually, this is from RCI as well. Um, I just thought those were easy things to do that were simple insurance and uh, worth protecting the bottom of the truck. And really the only thing um, exposed left is the exhaust and slightly the drive shaft, but that's pretty far up there. So pretty well protected underneath here. And then of course the CBI slides, these have been here for a while. These have been great. So I wanted to make sure that we also cover what I had to do really to get these, uh, these BF Goodwrench KO2 all-terrain uh, tires to actually fit um, the truck and uh, not be a daily headache, right? Um, so, so a couple of things that we had to do. First and foremost, th the size, right? I mean, what I had on here before was the needle grappler, uh, trail grapplers actually, and they were 265, uh, 265, 75, 16s, and then those are considered to be 32s. These we upped, these are 285, 75, 17 And so they are wider, uh, they are taller, and considered to be a 34. Um, now, in order to get these to fit, I needed to buy new rims. So there are the, uh, the Stealth Custom Series uh, F5 wheels. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll include a, a link down below in terms of where you can buy those. Um, now. Again, these wheels are great because they give you more clearance, but they're not gonna fit on your vehicle stock. So what you have to do is you have to make some adjustments. Like for starters, you need suspension. And that's what I got here. I hope you guys can see this okay. Um, this is, uh, all right, so clearly King Shocks. Um, these are with adjusters, and these are providing a three inch lift. Um, and these are the extended travel shocks. Now, there's a difference between long travel and extended travel. Technically, extended travel is really like mid-travel uh, length. And it just gives you like an extra inch of um, just an extra, an extra inch of droop, which is great. So um, and it, it has very little drawback. So a lot of people are, are changing to these. Um, also, I went with the Icon uh, Delta Joint upper control arms. You need those in order to get the right... Um, the right uh, alignment for these wheels to clear. So there's actually four, this actually has about a four and a quarter uh, degrees of caster. So basically that's pushing the wheel forward a bit and allowing it to clear because the back, when it turns, right, it would be rubbing on all kinds of stuff if you didn't do that. Which brings me to my next thing. Um, right in here, hope you guys can see this right here. This is, a cab mount and I had it chopped and then reboxed in and you have to do this in order for the tire which you can see here um, when it turns for the geometry of the tire to clear it uh, so at a, at a minimum you're gonna want to do that and then also 
for the front, I did do some cutting here um, as well because under compression, when the wheel and the fender start to come together, um, there are times when it can touch. And also back here, uh, what I did back here was I actually cut here and then this was open, but I thought, well, when uh, winter comes and it's raining and mud's flinging around and stuff, shit can get caught up in there, right? So I didn't want that. So what I ended up doing was uh, I just bought some automotive foam, sprayed it in there, uh, shaved it back, and then spray painted it black just to cover up the hole, um, plug it up a little bit, and uh, that that will do the trick. So um, that is what I basically did for the front. Um, the story in the rear is uh, a lot easier to understand. It's just really uh, icon adjustable um, leaf springs. And then again, adjusters with the king shocks in the rear. Um, and uh, that is allowing me to run these bigger tires, which is great because you can even see it when I stand back. Um, I mean, you get just a nice looking truck. And by the way, this is this is pretty filled right now. We just got back from camping. Well, we're still on the trip, but you know, we got my pups in the back with a bunch of stuff, the tent on top, there's things in the back here. My wife's in there as well. So it's pretty loaded and you can see, yet it's still relatively level, um, which is great. That's what you want. And another thing I've done here, if you haven't uh, paid attention carefully, there is something missing. And uh, right here, uh, on all of our uh, V6 Tacomas, you would typically have the exhaust pipe. And, um, you know, like, again, I, I haven't gone um, rock crawling or anything yet, but um, I've taken this thing off-road a few times, and I can tell you that this uh, mud flap, which I am gonna remove soon, I've just been a little lazy, um, it's gotten bent a couple of times just because I've gone over something, a rock or whatever, and uh, on coming down, it just compresses up to here. And so um, I thought, you know, with the exhaust being right here, that's probably gonna be another problem at some point. It's gonna get crushed um, and it's just hanging too low. So I ended up chopping it. I hope you guys can see, there it is, right there. That's where I cut it and uh, you can see it's nice and high, out of the way. Um, I still wanted it to aim down. Now, in the back of the bed, because I am running a rooftop tent and some other goodies, I decided that I should probably make sure that the bed itself is a little bit um, reinforced so that way it doesn't cause any cracking or anything on the shell. Um, and also that it's just it's just stronger overall. So I went with these bed stiffeners. Um, I believe these are the Total Chaos bed stiffeners. And what I like about these is that they actually go all the way to the top here. Some of them just stop to this bolt right there. And that's fine. But I like that it goes all the way to the top. And if you notice, there's extra, there's just these extra hook holes which I've actually found to be really um, useful, especially when I got lots of stuff in the bed and I wanna tie things down. It's really been helpful. And I think that they've been um, just super, super practical. I mean, I've had no issues and maybe even gotten rid of some of those creakies, creaky bed sounds that I used to have just because of these. So um, just food for thought. Thought, thought, thought that was good to mention. So another thing I want to also show you guys is what's going on inside the truck that's very different than last time. So um, the last time I did a video, this was pretty much just a stock truck from the inside. And I decided I wanted to make it just a little bit more catered towards my needs. So the first thing I did is I added one of these guys. See that? That is a S-Pod. Uh, this is the HD version. And uh, what's cool about that is that you can actually connect all of your accessories um, on here and manage them all in one place. And it actually, what's really cool about it, I think, is it also keeps all the uh, the rat's nest from your uh, engine compartment, right? So everything's nice and clean. Uh, you can add things easily. Um, it's all just more organized. Uh, it, it meant that I didn't have to drill more holes in the dash to add more switches like this, for example. Uh, but you can see here, I got uh, my rooftop light bar, my ditch lights, my roof lights, my backup lights. Uh, here's where I actually go uh, for my front locker when I need it and my air compressor as well. So that's just a nifty little place to keep stuff. Um, and on top of that, let me just climb in here. 
I also added this guy here. This is the uh, uh, Overland Expe I'm sorry, the Expedition uh, Essentials um, Overlanding uh, Hub here. And uh, what's cool about it is it it kind of I mean I think it works with the dash itself. I mean I know there's a lot going on there. I mean I got my radar detector, but here um, I think it blends into the style of the truck nicely. It offers four sections where I can add RAM mounts. So I've got two for phone, um, usually one for me and my passenger. I have, uh, this right here is for my CB radio, which I'll get to in a second. And then here, this is a two uh, port USB port. Um, and uh, what's cool about it is this particular USB port, it's gotta be 3.0. This charges my phone so much faster than the stock port here or, um, even just using the cigarette lighter with like a, you know, one of those ports that you could just buy at a gas station. So um, I'm very excited to have this. I feel it, it it's, it's added a lot of functionality to the truck and it really wasn't very expensive at all. Installation was a little, I mean, it wasn't bad at all, but you know, if you're not super handy, you might just want to have somebody else do it. Um, but if you're relatively handy, I think you could do it. It, it took me about two hours all in. So not nothing crazy. Um, now, uh, and here, what I did is, it's going to look a little messy, but I fit a CB radio. And, uh, you know, it's also got a PA system. And what happens is I've got, you know, I've got the uh, trusty mic here. But I didn't want to just drive around like this with this open. So what I do now is I could just um, place this here when I'm like off road. And it's just handy you know, in reach, um, the speakers there so I can hear it. Um, it, it just, it's just nicer. Um, so just little things to make, um, the car more, um, catered to me and the type of adventures I've been doing. And also it just, it, I feel it's just cooler, right? It's just more interesting than it was. So I know those are probably superficial things, but, um, I, I'm really digging it. So, um, curious to see if you guys have any other thoughts. Obviously, this is modular, so you can add more stuff to it, but um, pretty cool. But one of the things I had to do was, especially because of all the weight I'm adding to the truck, was get it regeared. And so uh, I am about a thousand miles into this 529 regearing that I've done at the truck. And I know there's a there's a huge debate online about 488s versus 529s. I'll give you my thoughts in a second on that. But just in general, 529s are, they're great. I mean, I think everybody would agree they're great, but they don't completely transform the truck. I think that that's something that I got sucked into from just watching a lot of online videos. I'm kind of making it seem like all my, like all of a sudden the truck is going to be just so much more awake and powerful even, or maybe torquey and just, or, or more like it should have been from the factory. But in reality, it just helps balance the playing field, right? Yes, you do get to stay in gear longer, like six gear on the freeway. Yes, it does help save on fuel. Um, those are probably the two biggest areas I've seen differences, but it doesn't make the truck feel powerful. It still doesn't. So it's interesting because I'm still not totally satisfied. Like I would love to add 50 horsepower more to the truck and then I would be ecstatic. Once I decided to do the gears, it just made sense to also throw in a front diff. And the reason why is because, you know, your, your lockers, uh, I mean, like you've got a rear locker already in the Tacoma TRD Pro, but I didn't have a front locker and I thought if I was ever gonna do one, now would be the time to do it because they're already gonna have a lot of the front end apart. So um, I did opt to do that and I did an e-locker, did the hair up e-locker and uh, it's great. I mean, uh, mind you, I've only gotten to test it a little bit here and there. I haven't actually done any trails yet to really test uh, all the new stuff that I've done on the truck, but that's coming. So stay tuned for that. All right guys, so that's the update to the uh, Tacoma. And uh, thanks for watching to the end. I know this was a little bit of a longer video than normal, but I really wanted to spend the time to go through all the little things I've done because not only did it uh, take a lot of time and effort, um, 
but it took a lot of money too. So it's a labor of love for a truck that I always want to keep. And uh, that being said, um, I hope I also gave you guys insight to stuff that you guys should avoid or don't do, um, or even swayed you one way or the other. Because honestly, there's no place online that really gives you the, uh, the real experience until you talk to somebody who's actually done stuff to their truck. That being said, guys, uh, I hope this was informative and uh, looking forward to the next one. Take care.